Dipti, I have no reason being here. I really have no reason being here. I am the grandchild of sharecroppers. I am the great grandchild of children of slaves. That's my pause moment. All generations of my family, including me, were poor. When I went to medical school at a very early age, at the end of the first week, I was walking to the Office of Admissions to get a one-year reprieve on my admission because I had no money to pay for my tuition. And on the way to the Office of Admissions, it was a Friday afternoon, I checked my mailbox at 2 and I paid 30. I'll never forget that because it was such a pivotal moment in the brain. I opened my mailbox and there was a full scholarship and an envelope waiting for me. I still get a little twinge wow. when, I, when I think about that because I was steps away from yielding my position at Tulane and trying to find some way to get enough money to get back in school to start medical school. And there it was, steps away from knocking on the door to resign. A scholarship was waiting for me. So from that point forward, you know, we've continued to really um, essentially ignore what others have said. When I was a young boy, people laughed, laughed when I said I wanted to be a doctor. Despite my academic performance, they laughed. When I went to college, a historically black college, by the way, I was advised that's just too impossible. There's no way that you'll be able to go to medical school. I said, where would you like to go? I said, my dream is to go to Tulane. If you grew up in Louisiana, Tulane was the Harvard of the South. Nice. To to <laughs> and they literally laughed and said, there's no way a little black boy is going to go to Tulane. It's not going to happen. And I just kept ignoring. I kept ignoring. Kept ignoring. And uh, it happened. I got admitted to Tulane when I was 19. I really hustled through college very quickly and started medical school at 20. And um, what a ride. What an incredible day. So lots of permutations on that story, but uh, I'm not supposed to be there. But, but what, can, what continued to make you push and continue? Because you were against a lot of odds that were against you. But what was that, what was that inside? Was it just that you wanted it so badly? What, what was the thing? So I think um, probably three things. Um, yes, I wanted it um, more than I wanted anything else. It's just that simple. I had been taught by my mother that um, being good enough you must always be better than. Being good enough isn't. You must always be better than. So everything I did, my goal was not only to be better than, but to be the best. Um, that's probably had some benefits, but also some some vulnerabilities. But besides my drive, which I would put as number three, I would say the other things that were really important was this sense of purpose that was instilled in me by those that did support me. The spirit of altruism that um, I developed very early on. I'm the product of a very traditional Black Baptist church background. And there are a lot of people that tap me on the shoulder and say, can do some good things in my life. And I never stop hearing those echoes. But the most important influence, and the only one person in your life like this, but it was a mother who believed in me with every fiber of her body. That's, um, even though she's been gone for decades, I always rejuvenate when I reflect on the power of a mother's love who did not waver, who did not let me waver. And when it was the most stressful moment in life, she was there to keep me grounded, to keep me focused. And as she would say, shoulders square, head up.